Hi, this is Michael Fenlon with Global American Series. Of all the issues facing us today, which one is the most important to our future? Is it football and what happens to Joe Paterno? Is it the election of 2012? Actually, none of those are as important as this one. Why? Because failure to act means the loss of our entire planet, and that would be really bad. Startling new climate numbers should be a wake-up call to people concerned about the future of their children and grandchildren. According to the International Energy Association, at the current rate of carbon dioxide buildup, climate change could be irreversible by 2017, a little more than five years from now. Why the concern? Take a look. Global output of heat trapping carbon dioxide jumped last year by the biggest amount on record. According to the U.S. Department of Energy, the new figures for 2010 means that the levels of greenhouse gases are higher than the worst case scenario outlined by climate experts just four years ago in 2007. The world pumped 564 million more tons of carbon into the air in 2010 than it did in just the year before 2009. That's an increase of 6%. It definitely means that the global recession is over, but the amount of extra pollution eclipses the individual emissions of all but three countries, China, the United States, and India, the world's top producers of greenhouse gases, none of whom are involved in any carbon reduction treaties. It is a monster increase that is unheard of, according to Greg Marland, a professor of geology at the Appalachian State University who has helped calculate the Department of Energy figures in the past. The latest figures put global emissions higher than the worst case predictions from the climate panel back in 2007. Those forecast global temperatures rising between 4 and 11 degrees Fahrenheit by the end of the century with the best guessment at about 7.5 degrees. Even though climate warming skeptics have attacked the climate change panels being too alarmist, scientists have generally found their predictions to be too conservative. In other words, we are in bigger trouble than we thought. The IEA is an intergovernmental agency that is not exactly the darling of the environmental movement. They have accused, been accused of underplaying the potential of renewable energies. They've been soft peddling issues like peak oil and overly optimistic about fossil fuels and playing politics about our energy future. So when they say it will be too late if we do not act by 2017, take notice. Here's a chart showing the cycle of warmer and cooler temperatures on Earth the last 800,000 years. How do we know this? Well, obviously not many of us were around the last 800,000 years. We know it from ice core drilling, where we go down, drill it out, and then you can see what's happened over the course of time. Notice that there is a range in which the Earth's temperatures have stayed warmer and cooler until recently when the Industrial Age began. Note how the temperatures are now beginning to shoot almost straight up like a rocket, evidence that we are breaking the natural cycle and heading for uncharted territory that could mean the end of life as we know it on this planet. According to Granger Morgan, head of the Engineering and Public Policy Department at Carnegie Mellon University, said the new figures, we are building up a horrible legacy for our children and grandchildren. Even our military is concerned about climate change causing increased conflict. The Department of Defense military and intelligence analysts studying the climate change have concluded that there is prospect of military intervention necessary to deal with the effects of violent storms, drought, mass migration, pandemics, and flooding. In 2011, we have had 14 major extreme weather events. It's a new record. In 1990, developed countries produced almost 60% of the world's greenhouse gases. Now it's probably less than 50%. The problem is going to run away from us unless we get 
every country involved, both developing and developed. Why? Because the cost of doing nothing will multiply for every one dollar of investment in cleaner technology that is not put in before 2020, we'll have to spend an additional $4.30 to fix it after that date. What happens if we don't act? Take a look at this photo of our sister planet Venus. It's the poster child for what happens to a planet subjected to runaway greenhouse gases. It is almost the same size as the planet Earth. Surface features suggest that it once had water. What happened? Whatever it was, we don't want to go down that road because that's what happens to runaway greenhouse gases. Surface temperatures now are in excess of 900 degrees Fahrenheit on Venus. There have been two kinds of critics that have shouted down the experts on climate change. The first thinks that they've got a great amount to lose because they make a lot of money destroying the planet, selling fossil fuels to the Cook brothers, are a good example. The second treat climate change as sort of a religion, but not really in a religious manner. Even some of the GOP candidates seem to be among them. It's time for the public disinterest, corporate foot dragging, and political timidity to be at an end. If the climate change proponents are wrong, the choice and the consequences are, if climate change proponents are wrong, we get cleaner energy, water, and air. If climate change skeptics are wrong and we do nothing, our planet could die. Which is worse? What is your choice? This is Michael Fedlin for the Global American series. Stay tuned and check out the website at globalamerican.org.